Hello everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Ozymandias because we are reaching our final target block and as you can see in the video the encounter is in 72 years so yeah that's quite a lot of time that we have to pass but before we get to that sphere of influence, we first have to perform another maneuver node somewhere in the middle of the way. In the middle being about 24 years after leaving Nidon. So I'm skipping ahead through that very long burn. Well, very long. It's about 500 meters per second, but since the Ozymandias is so heavy and uh, the engines don't have that much thrust to weight ratio. Yeah, as you can see here, 48 years later, that small little dot in the background is the sun. So not a lot of light out here, as you can imagine. But we have our periaps around Plock, and we're adjusting it a little bit further so we get closer to that little planet. And then, of course, we have to circularize and then we have to land. Yes, we're going to land the entire Ozymandias on Plock. Okay, but before we do that, we are gathering some science high above Plock and we're skipping through that right now because you already seen me gathering science from any biome that you can imagine. But once we have done that, we close everything up again until we reach there it is that's plock if uh, you think hmm that kind of looks familiar it does because basically this is the jewel moon val and it was just copy pasted and put on another trajectory uh, orbit of course and called plock but since NASA's New Horizon mission has provided some very, very detailed images of Pluto and also of its moon Charon, 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 I don't know, how do you pronounce it? I pronounce it Charon. And, well, since uh, we now know what Pluto looks like and what Charon looks like and what all the other moons around Pluto look like, I have read in the forums that... Uh, What's going on here? Okay, oh yeah, we're safe. Great. Okay, I have read in forums that the OPM maker, uh, the maker of the Outer Planet mod, is going to adapt Plock to that real world appearance that Pluto has, incidentally. So yeah, this uh, will probably make me go back to that little planet sometime in the future to visit it again. But before we can do that, we have to, of course, gather some science from near Plock. There we go, just getting everything we can and putting it, of course, in the science lab. So once more, there we go. And of course we need our trusty resource probe that has to perform one final task. Yes, this is the final planet we are going to visit. And of course the final celestial body that we need to scan to get resources from. Why do we need resources? Well, we have a long journey behind us. We have um, not that much fuel left. And of course we need some fuel to get back to Kerbin. Yes, the goal is, of course, to get the crew back home safely. And now we're burning a little bit of our monopropellant, and yes, we're circularized and can scan the planet. Okay. So, where is that ore hiding? Okay, I don't see it. Okay, where is it? Okay, maybe if I set it up here. Oh, oh yeah, and everything's gone. So the resource bug struck again, but for some reason I managed to somehow get uh, the resource scan results back. 
Now we have to just get the probe back into the Ozymandias. And once we've done that, of course, we have to get the Ozymandias down on the surface. Okay, just skipping ahead a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to do some adjustment burns. There you go, you see the probe in the background on the left hand side. And since it has run out of monopropellant, almost, I have to use the Ozymandias to adjust the orbit to get to the probe. And with uh, the bare minimum left in the tanks, the probe is heading back home inside the cargo bay. There we go, almost there, just some minor adjustments. And we're safe. And of course, next order of business, getting down on the surface. So, in order to do that, since Plock's gravity is a bit higher than the other moons that we have visited with the Ozymandias, I'm going to use... Uh, I'm going to burn off my horizontal velocity first, that's what I'm doing here, and I'm skipping through that uh, maneuver a bit. And once I've done that, I'm going to yeah, tip it over vertically and just reduce my speed, my falling speed actually, until I am close to the surface and can switch to the radial engines and then get down safely. Once again, skipping through that process a little bit, because it takes some time to get down there. And we're using quite a lot of fuel doing that, but that doesn't matter. As long as we get down safely, we can gather all the resources that we want. Okay, radial engines deployed. Landing gear deployed. And this is... oh well. have to adjust my horizontal velocity a little bit, but that was not a problem. Okay, taking it really slow. Please don't mind my voice, as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather, but I'm going to be fine, don't worry. Just being a few frequencies lower than before. Okay, we're hovering basically. And uh, this is a good thing because we're not crashing. But it would be even better if we were already on the surface and our delta V is declining with every second that we spend in the air. Well, air. This is of course a vacuum, but yeah, I hope you pardon the expression. Okay, I'm doing it really slowly because I don't want to crash north of 100 tons into the surface of Plock. That would be an unfitting end for this series now, wouldn't it? Okay... think we're going to be safe. Almost... and... 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 Yes! Touchdown! And we're already deploying the drills. Yes, we can now gather some resources and of course fill up our tanks for the long journey home. We don't need any oxidizers, because we don't want to use the lander again. This is going to save us some fuel. Well, not fuel, but uh, this is going to enable us to use less weight than if it was completely filled up. So that should make the ascent a little bit easier. Okay, but of course, the usual drill, we have to get some science. Okay, gathering science from Materials Bay and the uh, Mystery Goo. I, for some reason, I wanted to say ooze, but maybe my teenage memories reminded me of Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. And yeah, ragdolling around the surface. Ah, we survived. Thanks to the jetpack, we can head back closely. But before we can get back into the Ozymandias, we have to perform some tasks, being, of course, planting a flag. There we go. And taking surface samples and, of course, doing an EVA report. Okay, so 
I'm going to set this up a little bit. Yes, now the lighting is perfect. Perfect for a little group picture. Because this is really a momentous occasion. Nine Kerbals have managed to travel the entire outer planets. Sarnus, Erlom, Nidon and Plok. The crew has managed after more than 150 years to get to its destination at the edge of the solar system, the edge of existence, staring into the jaws of oblivion. What better reason to do a group picture than that? Of course, it's the last one to arrive. Well, this is not the last one, this is the penultimate Kerbal. A little bit slow on his feet, but yeah, what do you know. And now the captain, Stelnitzer Kerman, has finally exited the ship. And here we are, the brave crew of the Ozyman Diaz, taking in the scenery of Plock, the furthest celestial body from their home planet. Okay, now it's time to get the crew back into the ship and fill up the tanks and, of course, head back home. I'm going to skip ahead through that process. You don't have to watch me get nine Kerbals back into the ship. I think you can trust me that I can manage to do that. Okay, so everybody is back on board. And then, of course, we have to fill up the tanks. And once we have done that, it is time to head back home. Okay, this is going to be interesting because this is the heaviest, well, the highest gravity we have ever experienced with an Ozyman Diaz launch. But as you can see, no worries, we manage fine and head back into the cold night skies. Okay. Just using my radial engines to provide some extra lift. But I think even with just a nuclear option, I would have been fine. So this is going to be a little bit longer a burn than I expected. The good thing about me burning those radial engines is they also use... Um, what's it called? Yeah, oxidizer. And the more oxidizer I use, the less weight I have to lug around with me uh, during the next maneuver nodes. Okay, so extending my radiators and solar panels. Solar panels, of course, for looks only, but the radiators I need because I'm burning those uh, nuclear engines for quite some time now. And I really don't want this ship to explode due to overheating. Okay, this is looking better and better with every second. Still quite a challenging ascent for a ship of this size. With a thrust to weight ratio that low, of course. If there were, for instance, four mammoth engines in the back, then of course this would not be a problem at all. But of course, you'd have to lug them around through the solar system and that would take lots of fuel and of course oxidizer and yeah. In the interest of saving all of that, I have used nuclear engines. And now we're really picking up speed and we're heading up into orbit. Okay, this is looking good actually. Uh, yep, okay, now we have to circularize a little bit. And once we've done that, we're, it's going to be interesting to find a maneuver node that would actually take us back to Kerbin. Setting up for the circularization burn. Of course, we're time warping up until that. There we go, firing the engines. We have escaped from Plock. And now, since we have some ore left in our aft tank, I'm using that to uh, fill up my fuel tanks. I have used, of course, uh, those uh, nice little fuel cells to provide the necessary energy. And yeah, now I'm trying to find a way back to Kerbin. And we found one! 
And yeah, it's 32 years back. Well, 32 years, that's nothing compared to the amount of time the crew has already endured in space. And of course, they're going to hit the hay and sleep for 30 years until their day. So, yeah, they won't really feel that time now, will they? Okay, you see the maneuver note here, so I really have to punch those engines to get out of there. 900 meters per second of delta V, so I should have enough left in the tank to make an insertion burn around Kerbin and adjust the, uh, my orbit back then. I should, this is just me calculating it on the top of my head. Will I succeed? Will the crew survive? Find out next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.